Welcome everybody to this ordinary general meeting preparation session. Um, it is a virtual session of the presentation of the documents for voting, as well as a tribute to our normal host these times uh, to Egypt, uh, who are giving a presentation here also about the seed system. But well, I hand over to my colleague and our president, Steve Jones. Uh, please note that um, the session is recorded and um, it will be made available on the ESTA YouTube channel. Uh, so the people who were not able to attend here can always go back and have a look at the presentations. And uh, the important ones are all based on the voting documents which were sent round. So um, have a look there as well. And now over to you, Steve, for an introduction. Thank you very much, Andreas, for the introduction to this year's uh, virtual meeting. It's a shame that we can't meet in Egypt, but we are going to have a flavor to the meeting colleagues in Egypt. Um, there's a little bit of feedback, Alexander, I think, from your microphone. Could could we just m mute it at the moment, please? Thank you. So so um, just just uh, going back to our introduction to, to Marwa, uh, who's going to give a presentation after my introduction uh, uh, from Egypt. The, the meeting had to be online um, because of uh, the COVID situation. And this is the second year we've had to go online and, and in virtual. I um, hope uh, we can meet again at a physical meeting in, in the future. So 2020 was the year of plant health, and that's been extended over into 2021. And ISTA celebrated the plant health uh, work by having the ISTA plant health seminars on the 5th, 12th, and 19th of May held virtually. And the links on this and other slides give you the links to the webinars where you can find things. So I'm going to go through the quick overview of what we plan for you um, in my time this morning, in Craig's time tomorrow morning. So I know with the time zones and the challenges, uh, it's great that people can join us on this meeting today. And we have a full program for you. We have the seed system in, in Egypt from Marwa. Uh, myself presenting the executive committee report, uh, followed by Kashavulu talking about the new initiatives of Younger ISTA, and followed by the activity report of Andreas as the Secretary General. We, we then move on to the ISTA membership fee proposals and documents that go along with that, which are the documents have already been shown on the ISTA website, so you can go and look at those in detail for yourselves. So the rules proposals from Ernest Allen as the ISTA rules chair, um, articles change proposal from Kashabulu, um, a discussion document and motion about uh, fees for the ECOM uh, presented by myself. And then we go on to some of the planning for the future, the presentation about the 2022 Congress and uh, a venue um, from Craig as the immediate past president and also the host organizer for the Congress in New Zealand. Then um, a welcome to a, an old friend and member of the executive committee from the past, Alexander Malko, to present about the annual meeting in 2023. This will be followed up by an overview and reminder of how to vote this year because the OGM itself is really the electronic online virtual voting, which has been sent out to the designated members to vote on behalf of their countries or distinct economies. And then there'll be some closing remarks from our hosts in Egypt and, and finally myself. So with that um, overview of our plan for the, for the two hour meeting, um, I hand over to Marwa uh, to give us uh, her presentation on behalf of the um, seed industry and the certifying authorities in Egypt. So thank you very much, Mawa. Over to you. So Mawa, you, you're on mute at the moment. 
We can see your presentation, but you're on mute at the moment. Can you hear? I can hear you now. Thank you very much, Mara. Thank you, Dr. Steve. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to this event, and I would like to thank you, Dr. Steven, and thank you, Dr. Andre, for giving a chance, a chance of uh, and particular uh, time for me to present a presentation about the investing in Egypt. I also wanted to thank the staff of ISTA to, uh, that uh, Egypt had been choosing uh, to host uh, the event this year. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, prevented us to see you face to face here on the land of East. And we hope to have uh, this uh, chance again to see you in a uh, different time. And also, I wanted to thank all my teamwork uh, in task for uh, cooperating in uh, building uh, this uh, restoration uh, with uh, me. Now, let's start it to present our presentation. High quality seed in is uh, the secret of uh, success. Next step. Laws and legislation. Laws and legislation has been issued since 1926 to organize seed industry in Egypt, which encourages the private sector to invest in seed industry since 1980. That led to increase the number of private companies and encourages them to engage effectively in producing. Certified high quality seed. The government instruction that uh, is responsible for applying these laws and legislations has been developed. Next to Olga, please. Seed industry in Egypt is witnessed a lot of progress in the past few years as the number of seed production companies working in the private sector have increased the seed industry in Egypt, which basically depend on cereal crops, especially yellow and white hide, corn and silver granite for varieties such as rice and wheat. Consequently, seed companies started to uh, produce hybrid vegetables in addition to those are imported to engage effectively in the production of high quality certified seed. Next, high quality seed occupies the central stage in raising the agricultural production level in field of both quantity and time. Therefore, the ministry has been keen on setting wise policies to establish and support and seed the industry program in Egypt that matches international standards. We present by the Central Administration for examining and approving seeds. Policy of Ministry of Agriculture for developing seed industry. The first, encourage different entities to develop new variety with high yield and have the ability to endure unusual climate conditions. Two, create the right atmosphere to maximize the role of the private sector and encourage instead investment in seed production and marketing activity. Three, Reorganization of government sector to be compatible with uh, the changing condition in the market economy. Next, please. Four. Provide Egypt a comparative advantage in producing a new variety by joining the international organization, Europe, ESTA, OSD, and the Commission. Five. Increase the export from local agriculture group and raise the efficiency of seed industry. The Central Administration for Seed Certification. Task participate according to legislative frame in, in all stage of seed industry as a controlling and monitoring authority. Cask play an important role to ensure high quality seed 
of beauty and the hygiene initial needs we of wheat insect and disease because it is it is the only competent affected body authorized by the Ministry of Agriculture and Land Reclamation in Egypt. To carry out its supervisor roles in the production and the handling of seed, controlling exported and important seed that conform to the international standard as well as its rules in the production of plant variety and varieties uh, tests to be uh, registered, uh, registered in uh, Egypt as for its impact on the production of uh, the farmer and uh, the breeder right. ASK has a credit central laboratory by International Seed Testing Association ESTA, in Giza. It has a 13 seed testing station all over Egypt, Rafanomin. Also, it held, it held the quality insurance certified and certified and five locations for conducting field controlling tests. Agricultural seasons in Egypt. Agriculture in Egypt is divided into three agricultural seasons, the winter, summer, and night season. In addition to sustainable or annual food whose production season extended to a full agricultural year or several years, such as sugar cane, food, food groups, and wood tree. Seed producer in Egypt. Government sector, private sector. Government sector by number 52 Furniture Lab, uh, 3,241 agricultural treating shops, uh, 35 preparation uh, station of seed. Private sector by number 450 for storage of potato seed. 623 23 companies uh, to produce seed, uh, uh, agricultural treating shop, uh, 40 tissue culture lab, 383 planet storage potato, uh, 83 uh, preparation station of seed. Strategy of a crop in seed in Egypt, wheat, corn, rice, uh, cotton, in addition to wheat, clover, and soya bean. This diagram clarifies the cultivated area by Finland for strategic group uh, for uh, reducing certified. Also, uh, the, uh, the diagram uh, clarifies the certified quantity of crop by ton during the last uh, three years. The Egyptian annual need of seed for uh, the local marketing. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, vegetable uh, crop potato uh, to 109,758 uh, 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 tons, uh, 129,753 uh, tons filled crops, uh, 7,160,000 uh, for uh, 470 siblings uh, and uh, 63 kilogram uh, medical and uh, aromatic uh, planet, uh, 82.144 uh, uh, ton vegetable seed. Please, This, uh, this, uh, this diagram clarify um, we uh, we observe uh, we observe the from uh, the diagram that the quantity of uh, both uh, vegetable has been increased from uh, 2080 to 2020, uh, but uh, the country is uh, direction direction uh, to uh, elect in a, a new variety of vegetable uh, so. Uh, the, uh, uh, the reaching uh, central uh, to reduce the rate uh, of uh, import vegetable and uh, reducing uh, the gap uh, of uh, self-efficiency. 
this uh, slide uh, clarify as a result. Um, it's what? Yes. Uh, as a result of uh, elect uh, a new variety increasing uh, the cultivated area and increasing the quantity of seed, uh, which led to increasing of uh, uh, export seed by tool. During the last three years, um, uh, from uh, field crops, vegetable crops, clover. Develop and improve uh, uh, the agricultural uh, performance plan. The Ministry of Agriculture sets the, the policies for the development of uh, Egyptian agriculture and adjusted the legislation of seed production in line with the strategy of the Ministry of Maximize the role of the private sector in the seed industry according to local and global trends. So, the aim of the Ministry of Agriculture for reaching the involvement of the performance are to the following, uh, the first increasing the yield uh, of self pollinate crop gradually from uh, 30% to 70% by using self-fired seed. So, encouraging the cultivated uh, cultivation uh, of uh, hybrid crop. So, the current dependence on uh, uh, the, uh, the use of uh, modern technical uh, techniques uh, in agriculture, which save the time effort and uh, reduce uh, the loss of yield. Uh, the production of rice and wheat, uh, which is the most important strategic crop in Egypt. Egyptian cotton is one of the most famous uh, crop in the textile industry. International Organization and Seed Industry in Egypt. International Seed Testing Association. Egypt is considered one of the founding countries of the ESTA and has become a member of the ESTA since 1997. The central administration has the central laboratory, which is the only laboratory accredited by ESTA. And the laboratory successful vast uh, eight international audit. That uh, the, um, the last of uh, which was in uh, 2019, the organization helped continue the existence, existence of uh, high quality seed that uh, were the continuous update and the develop goals for ensuring the efficiency of seed as well as the reliability test uh, that uh, the administration goes through. The international certificate by uh, the issue uh, by Giza Central Seed Testing Lab uh, is last year, uh, 2020. It's the orange certificate, 2019. It's the blue certificate, 24. Local mm -hmm. certificate uh, by English language, 1898. Local certificate by Arabic language uh, 1039. International Union for Protection of a New Variety of the Land, Yuvo. Egypt accessed the Yuvo membership in, uh, on uh, December uh, 2019. This is uh, interrupted the transformation from the uh, seed on both stage to uh, the investment and the trading in the seed field stage. Advantage access. Adva Advantage accession to your both forecast. Its location became an international. Uh, the possibility of investing in this result, the possibility of becoming a point of contact and the focal point for uh, testing some planet variety of any of member state. Total VVV application in 2020, 34 application. Uh, the protect variety in 2020, 19 variety. Finally, 
finance organization of economic cooperation and development. Also, Egypt is member in organization of economic cooperation and development to OECD, with, uh, which is uh, responsible uh, for determining the acceptance uh, level of further inspection and regulation seat rating. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Marva, for your presentation. Very informative. And um, on OECD level, we can probably say that your colleague, um, Mona Kazir, is also chair of the OECD seed schemes in the moment. And um, she's doing a very great job over there. I hand over now to Steve Jones, uh, the president of ISTAPOS Activity Report for 2020. Steve, please. Thank you very much, Andreas, and thank you very much for the uh, introduction to the uh, Egyptian uh, seed industry and the laboratory there, Marwa. I, I really enjoyed that presentation and overview from you, so thank you very much. And there was a lot of information there for us to, to look at, so I think we can study that again online with the video goes online. So thank you very much, Marwa. So now I will continue with the executive committee report um, the the activity report is um, presented there as an OGM document Steve you're you were frozen for a second okay I was just, yeah. there we go, just making sure my mouse is working. So, the, okay. so in, the, in the overview, um, we have the ECOM membership that I'll give an overview to, the ECOM working groups, and then an overview or summary of my presentation this morning. The OGMs from 2020 to 2023, uh, what, what I'm just going to present here, and in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the OGM 2020 became a virtual meeting. So the first virtual meeting for, for ISTA, and unfortunately this year also has to be virtual. Um, 2022, we hope to be in New Zealand, and 2023, we, we've already mentioned in the opening slides, and we'll have a more detailed presentation about the 2023 meeting uh, today. There is a global membership uh, for ISTA. Um, there is 82 different countries where we have at least one active ISTA member, and it's spread all over the world. This ISTA truly has a, an international and worldwide reach. Um, there certainly is a bigger concentration of some people, uh, some members uh, within Europe, but we also have an increasingly uh, membership from, from Asia and also into Oceania, North America, South America, and Africa. And we're looking to increase in many of these areas. The, the number of laboratories is up to 237. And there's 146 of those now accredited. And Florina will talk about that in her presentation later. The ISTA members um, on the executive committee try to represent those regions of the world. And I'm pleased to say we have somebody from all the different regions of the world represented on the ECOM. Region representation can be more of one person. And you can see that there are quite a few people from Europe. But in the future, maybe there will be more representation from other areas of the world as well. ISTA's main aim is to facilitate seed trade by making use of internationally approved method, methods that are voted on by the membership. And we'll have that session today from Ernest Allen presenting the rules changes. The ISTA certificates are, are the main thing that's recognized with the ISTA orange um, representing seed lots with maximum seed lot size and sampling under the control of the ISTA labs as well as testing. Uh, Andreas will update us about the proposed ISTA e-certificate system that's being 
developed worldwide. There's about 200,000 certificates issued globally every year. The ISTA strategy for 2019 to 2022 is what the ECOM is trying to implement with your help as, as membership and members of the technical committees. Uh, the current strategy is published on the ISTA website, and, and I'd encourage you to have a review of it, because in the future, one of the tasks for Kashavulu as the incoming president is to make sure that we review and look at those um, strategies as part of part of the the revision of the strategies uh, for the 2022 to 2025 session the strategic goals for 2022 to 2025 this is an example of picking up on goal one from the strategy i won't go through all of the strategy uh, goals but here i've we picked out and highlighted with kashabulu um, some of the things that may be progressed uh, and given priority in the period 22 to 25, like supporting the initiative of Younger ISTA to help support the technical committees, developing methods of new species, perhaps with the focus on tropical species, supporting the work of the technical committees and encouraging membership and participation in new tests and methods, developing new ways of promoting the importance of ISTA uh, within the seed value chain. These ideas about the strategic goals um, are there for your input uh, and, and help. And uh, we need to know what's important to you. So by reviewing the previous goals, it would be good for you to give that feedback to the executive committee, members in your regions, or directly to Andreas, the Secretary General. We will take that idea as well. So many of the virtual meetings of, of ISTA have been down to um, because of the COVID situation and a bit like the Egyptian meeting today, we needed to have um, a meeting of the executive committee, which is usually a five day meeting in, in Saskatoon, it was planned for. But instead of that, we had a five day virtual meeting uh, where we had sessions of at least two hours each day and also in other sessions where we interacted with the scientists at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency where I work and also at the Ag Canada research areas, um, which host the Gene Bank uh, for Canada. So we wanted to give those that virtual meeting a Saskatoon flavor, and I think we achieved that. And today we're hoping to um, give the meeting here in um, Egypt online uh, an Egyptian flavor as well. Other web-based econ meetings, we've regularly been holding those um, every four weeks for two hours um, as a compromise across the different time zones. But we've also had a designated authorities meeting with the um, executive committee in April. And then the webinars and podcasts, we've also been doing those. And um, you'll see a screenshot of some of those with myself and Andreas talking about the challenges with COVID and another one from Farina about the how to achieve ISTA accreditation. The activity report that I'm now going to go through is published on the ISTA website. And my role is to report the activity of, of the group. I'm really the spokesperson for the working groups. And the work is only possible because of the excellent work of the people on the executive with it and within the secretariat working together uh, to produce the, the, the activities. The first one of those is the accreditation working group that has been very busy over the last year with a huge amount of work on developing the remote audit system uh, and also looking at interactive uh, tools, training tools online, cooperating with TCOMs, and uh, organizing the virtual QA workshops. So a great thanks to Rita as chair of that and all the members of, of the committee there, and especially Florina. In doing the remote audits and maintaining the accreditation system, 
Um, this has allowed us to keep going with the ISTA quality QA systems. By making use of uh, the remote system, it certainly has allowed us to look at different ways of doing things. But there's no doubt that um, the physical audit is, is the best way to go for future. Articles Working Group is chaired by Kashavulu. Uh, there were no articles changes in 2020, but there's one that he will talk about today. Designated Authorities and International Relations Working Group, chaired by Craig. Um, there have been continued online discussions with ISF and OECD in February and March, and we will plan to have other meetings with our key collaborators um, in the coming months. UPOV, uh, Q, APSA, etc. all key organizations for the success of ISTA in the International Forum. And we're looking forward to making new links with other organizations as we continue to collaborate with organizations like uh, AOSA that we mentioned yesterday on, on our meetings for the technical committees. The events working group is chaired by Berta Killerman and they've been focused in the last year on planning for the annual meeting today and the Congress forward planning for the Congress and annual meeting 2022. And also looking at possible venues and places for 2023, 24 and 25. We're here about 23 today and future meetings uh, at, at upcoming meet, uh, annual meetings. Later on this year, we'll be asking for people to offer to host the 2025 Congress. Marketing and Publications Working Group, chaired by Ignacio. Uh, the work they've been highlighting there is that all the ISTA publications of handbooks are now electronic. The ISTA rules is now well established as an official version in Spanish within the different layers of the online rules. Videos. Uh, for online training and webinars are being developed and there's been an increased presence on social media thanks to the marketing department um, of ISTA. Science and Technology Working Group chaired by Lena has been highlighting how to proceed with new technologies and they're working on a publication to bring this to the membership. Technical Committees Working Group is chaired by Valerie and they've continued uh, with the support from the ECOM to the technical committees of 3,000 Swiss francs that the technical committees can use each year. And also that the technical committees can bid and work on um, special projects under 100,000 Swiss franc funding. They're also looking at training initiatives, new technologies, and online TCOM, ECOM meetings have been held during the last year. The most recent meetings were yesterday and the day before, uh, where the technical committees gave us a very good overview um, of their work. And there are future open sessions for the different committees being advertised on the ISTA websites under the events. This slide presents you with uh, an overview of the special projects that have been funded in the last two years, five different projects, all looking at a range of uh, new technologies, imaging, uh, predicting uh, germination and vigor, uh, making use of digital references, and also looking about the possibility to report insect detection on ISTA certificates. All new and exciting areas for the technical committees and for the ISTA membership. Most recently in the last um, few, few weeks, we've approved um, new projects starting in 2021. Uh, these are the use of equilibrium relative humidity for determining moisture status, something that's been used in gene banks for a while, but now could also come into the ISTA rules. And, a, and another project looking to update the seedling images for the germination handbook and also make use of that from the germination technical committee as a basis for regular image collection. So we look forward to reports of those in the future. The other projects are going to be reported in the October version of STI, so look out for that. The 20 technical committees are certainly the heart and the work working uh, part of, of ISTA, 
that delivers for the membership. I'd really like to take, say thank you to all the chairs of the technical committees and also their members for all their hard work. And that's a theme that you'll see from me today is to say thank you to everybody and make sure we acknowledge their significant contributions. So if, if I end up repeating myself or saying thank you a number of times, that's because that's something that we really should be doing and acknowledging. Membership fees working group is Kashavulu and uh, there's no increase in the fees for another year and he'll talk about those later on today. The vegetable seed industry is one of the partners and collaborations that we have is with the ISF, International Seed Federation. This vegetables seed industry focused working group is chaired by Berta Killerman and a joint chair from uh, the vegetable seed industry and members from vegetable seed industry. We're looking at uh, experiment to whether we can technically increase the number of sublots of the vegetable seeds or also whether we can reduce the working sample of other seeds based on data that's been presented. The joint ISTA ISF Seed Health Working Group has members uh, of ISTA Executive Committee from Valerie Cockrell, Valerie Grimol as Chair of the seed, ISTA Seed Health Committee, and also from ISF from Rose Souza Richards. The ongoing projects there are discussions on the joint pest lists um, and, and the, the two pest lists that both organizations have, and also the seed health methods. So just in summary from what I presented here today, We've made good progress um, on new key initiatives like new technologies, e-certificates and younger ISTA. We're still maintaining and improving the international rules for seed sampling and testing. Uh, we're continuing with our labor laboratory accreditation, even though we haven't needing to adapt to COVID-19 situation. And we hope we're still able to support the global seed trade and help feed the world. Econ working groups, I've given you a flavor of what we've been doing there. Virtual meetings have been every two hours, once a month for the Econ. We had a virtual meeting with the executive in, in Canada, in Saskatoon, um, where I'm based and work for the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and like, would like to thank them for their support of my work within ISTA. Working group meetings throughout this year and online meetings with key collaborating organizations. At that point, I'd just like to continue with my theme of thanking people. Progress is only possible by the hard work, cooperation and dedication of the technical committee members, the Econ Working Group members, Mr. Secretariat, designated authorities and support from the host organizations, laboratories and seed industry. So I thank you very much for that. And now I'm hand over to uh, Andreas and to Kashavulu for presentations about the uh, Younger ISTA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So I am presenting an attraction of new generation. Uh, I'm sorry, so I'm just looking at the, this one. Uh, the Young at ISTA Working Group was established based on the outcome of a meeting with young seed professionals held during 2019 ISTA Congress in Hyderabad. The aim was to develop the idea of Young at ISTA to attract the more young seed professionals into the association. This aim was based on action three of the 
Fourth goal of ISTA strategy, when we look the action, three was to build science capability through attracting more scientists and researchers into ISTA work either directly or through collaboration. Under the goal of fourth strategy, to strengthen the science and technology supporting ISTA to develop advanced research to make the connection between scientific development and, all, and application in seed testing and sampling and also the seed science. So to achieve this goal, there is a need as a first step to attract the talented professionals, researchers, analysts, scientists who are willing and able to contribute to the work of ISTA for the benefit of their own country, organization, and personal career development. When we uh, so look at this, the, the terms of references, the, the working group was developed the terms of references that includes aiming to promote and encourage the next generation of seed professionals to be part of continuing ISTA activities, to be active in ISTA and build capacities. Uh, in the seed, set, seed testing, sampling, seed science, and policy planning as well. So this will enable uh, a younger generation to become involved in ISTA and continue the activities of ISTA into the future. The definitions, the definitions for eligibility criteria uh, should include one or more like such as like uh, the younger ISTA means the they are the individuals are in their early career, career in the seed sector uh, ideally not older than 40 years of age the criteria another criteria would be the qualifications the qualifications in the seed testing sampling science and technology and are, are any allied subjects are uh, relevant work experience and also individuals who have demonstrated their commitment to work in this field uh, the, 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 the another criteria would be a minimum of three years relevant work experience in seed testing, sampling, and science and technology. Uh, the, 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 the involvement, the criteria, again, the uh, criteria in the involvement in at least one ISTA activities, like, uh, for example, the oral communication, Poster presentation in any one of the ISTA meetings or congresses participation in capacity building activities, including workshops, projects, and working groups, and any other the ISTA related activities. Then the, coming to the, uh, the strategy, strategy for attracting new generation for the seed professionals to the ISTA, uh, the strategy would be the encouraging, the encouragement to the young professionals to organize the scientific meetings in different regions and which will be supported by ISTA. The encouragement to the university students and analysts of ISTA laboratories nearby and ISTA annual meeting. The, in addition, the encouragement to the young scientists and an analysts to be potential review of seed science and technology journal. Another important uh, the strategy as mentioned by the Steve, the encouraging the technical committees to engage the young 
professionals as a member of their committees the supportive actions the supportive actions could be like the financial support in the ista events like any events uh, in this including the travel bursary the when we look the process the process to implement and the promotion strategy so it's a like the ensure a fair and equitable system to support all countries distinct economies and regions then coming to the process process uh, to implement and then process will be a simple for applicant and also the assessor as well so the uh, the working group discuss the proposed strategies with the ista technical committee chairs and they based on their feedback uh, it was uh, the also developed a young ista online forum to enable regular interaction uh, on steel science testing and technologies so this will Uh, facilitate young seed professionals to expand their knowledge in sampling and testing, and also to network and engage with colleagues about science, seed science and technology to discuss. And it also provides new ideas of the seed testing methods and technologies in future. if you uh, it is it is already uh, the engista forum is uh, opened in the linkedin and then the today about the 62 young seed pro professionals are in the interaction uh, interacting uh, in the forum and all the new developments and also hosted by the ista from the ista secretariat thank you very much now i hand over to uh, secretary general andreas thank yeah thank you very much kashav gulu for your nice overview and um, my presentation I think will come up in a second Okay, I will be giving my report as a report of the Secretary General for the year 2020. There are a few things which go into 2021, and this report is a shared report between myself and Florina Palada, the head of accreditation and technical department, uh, who is also the deputy to the Secretary General Office. Um, some background information all information which you can see here are highlights from the activity report uh, of the ista committees and um, the uh, other groups in ista and this activity report can be found under the uh, below um, address a uh, short summary we talk about the ista secretariat membership accreditation program that will be done by florina the ista training and edu education program publications and products highlights and achievements and last but not least the ista finances in the secretariat we are uh, 13 people in the moment we have two new people uh, you see on the right top um uh, that is Stella Marcu she joined us as a system auditor and she is with us since beginning of the year so actually since march and she's um, probably um will be out and auditing uh, in probably 6 to 9 months and be ready for that you see that there's a gentleman who is um, joining us actually He joined us at the end of last year, and he will leave us again end of July. He just replaced uh, Joanna Osonova during her maternity leave, and she will be come, uh, coming back end of this month uh, to have a handover with Sven 
Um, Sven did a great job for us, and I thank him very much also for that, um, because he uh, could step in exactly the time we needed him for, and he had no delay in uh, being a replacement for Joanna and worked a lot on the new website. For the membership development, you can see here that there's an increase in member laboratories. And in Florina's presentation, you will probably see the same thing for accredited laboratories. We can find um, new, new members, maybe laboratories or personal members in Australia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Egypt, France, Hungary, India, Netherlands, Norway, Rwanda, Spain, Thailand, Turkey, United Kingdom, Uzbekistan, and Zambia. You see that we are pretty stable with the associate members, and uh, it's a little bit going down with personal members. Uh, please always note that each laboratory has got a personal member in their uh, membership um, package, and that is not included in the below number of personal members. I hand over now to Florina to go ahead, and please let me know when I have to change your slide, Florina. Thank you very much, Andreas. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will have uh, in my presentation a few aspects about the accreditation process. Uh, as you know, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our plan was not as we thought at the beginning. So in 2020, we had 48 audits planned, but we performed 27 audits. 22 out of 26 were performed with on-site assessment, three complete remote and one audit partially remote. The system part was done in site, on-site. Uh, 2021 is a challenging year for us. We have to perform 73 audits in total, 48 are as are planned for 2021. We have 22 from 2020 postponed and also we will have three accreditation audits because we have a good new candidates looking to be is accredited so 73 in total for the moment we are uh, performing in a very smooth flow um, the audits and all of them all uh, laboratory representatives are contacted and agreed with the audit dates uh, at the end of May 2021, uh, 27 audits are already performed. And uh, from this 27, from this number, 13 out are from the postponed audits from 2020 and 14 already from our plan uh, of 2021. All performed audits were complete uh, remote. As it was already mentioned, we had to face, we have to work and to produce, to develop a new procedure on how to perform audits. And we use three licenses um, of go to meeting tool. Uh, as you can see from the next slide, the number of the laboratories, the accredited laboratories, it's increasing every year, more uh, members, more accredited laboratories. And at the end of 2020, we had 146. In fact, this year, the same, the same number, 146. Speaking about the regional distribution of the auditors, we speak first about the contracted auditors. I'm happy also to say that the number of the auditors is increasing. We have a good number in Europe already uh, performing audits we have in Canada in the United States as well. We have a new uh, system auditor approved in Kenya. And we have in our plan for this year to train and to approve uh, additional auditor system and contracted auditors. What is highlighted in blue are the auditors in different stages of uh, their training. It's true we had a little delay in training due to the specificity of 2020-2021, but um, we uh, even next year, week we have uh, one system auditor in training and exam. Uh, looking to uh, the feedback received after our audits, uh, we from the 26 already performed, 
25 are finalized and we receive feedback from 24 uh, audits. The achievements are good, excellent and very good rating received from 24, meaning 96% and one single laboratory rated our performance as satisfactory. So our KPI for the accreditation department is achieved. Few words about the learning tool, interactive certificates. You have been informed a year ago that it was in process. And it was launched at June 1st, and now we update it periodically. And, and the last slide is about the ISTA proficiency test. You have received detailed information about the organization of the proficiency test. I would like just to highlight that for ZMIs and for Festuca pratensis were uh, also included seed mix, so-called uh, seed mix, to train the participants for the seed identification. What is new, it is the new DNA PT already uh, submitted to the participants and it is a slight uh, a change in the thousand seed weight test from Medicago sativa was moved to Fagopirum esculentum. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Florina. I just want to talk now about the training and education program. We started 2020 with some of these um, trainings um, that um, was um, held up then, um, but on 2021 we uh, were ready to go for trainings, online trainings, and in February 2021 we had our first um, workshop as a training, as a beta training for accreditation for beginners. Uh, thank you very much to Florina and Joel who did a great job here to establish that. And that was followed in April this year by two workshops, online workshops uh, for the same topic. That was due to the fact that um, we had an awful lot of people who wanted to take part here. I do not want to forget that there was a workshop in 2020, a joint workshop on bigger testing in collaboration with the Asia and Pacific Seed Association. And uh, we thank the uh, Asia and Pacific Seed Association for this um, collaboration. Publications and products, um, Seed Science and Technology is one of our publications. And you know that for a number of years, we have it as an online version, um, which is free to um, work on. And uh, that also came to the point that um, since 2018, we then do not sell any SST prints anymore. Uh, we sometimes sell single copies, um, but that's also very rarely. What we can um, uh, say is that the download of chapters is in a quite stable area, and the open access and full length papers are also quite stable and deliver a stable income stream to the product. Um, what we need to mention here that uh, all old copies of SST are now all digitalized by the Secretariat and they can maybe be made available much easier for people who are interested, so without any shipping cost. Public, other publications and products are, of course, the handbooks. And you see that um, um, as a new handbook uh, for seed sampling is announced, we had no sale of any seed sampling handbook in uh, 2020. And um, the Seedling Evaluation Handbook, which was newly published in 2019, had excellent sales um, over the um, period of 2019 and 2020. And also here, all new handbooks are only published in a um, PDF version. Uh, and all old handbooks, which are here mentioned, are also digitalized by now and are available in PDF version. Uh, another new handbook which came up was Flower Seed Handbook, um, which also led to higher numbers of sales. Uh, you see various handbooks and publications, as we don't have new handbooks coming out in the moment, and other publications that is um, a little bit low. 
the certificates. We had another excellent year for the provision of certificates to our accredited laboratories. Uh, we first thought it would be a year of record for the oranges, but 2017 was still higher. And what we estimate that the use of certificates will increase. Um, so we will probably have a um, um, strong income stream coming from this as well, which might also be due to the fact that um, in between European countries, uh, and I don't mean the EU, but European countries, there might be the request for more uh, orange certificates. What are the highlights and achievements? Um, we are working on the final stages of the new ISTA website. Uh, the beta testing will start in the next quarter and we should go live with it in quarter three, 2021. There is a common meeting of the company, MySign, who's doing it for us, the group of the secretariat and the marketing and publication working group next week, where we will get a first idea on how it is evolving and how it might look like. Uh, MySign is also working on the electronic certificate part, um, we will have a beta testing starting in the last quarter of this year and maybe a go live in quarter one 2022. But we need to have discussions with the rules committee and the rules chair and the ECOM uh, if that is a, a testing period because we need to change the ISTA rules chapter one uh, to allow electronic certificates to be used. We are looking into more webinars to inform our stakeholders. Steve talked a little bit about the first two, which you can see here. Uh, we're also looking, and that is next month as well, or this month actually, uh, on a um, uh, webinar with Fiona Hay on seed science and technology and how to publish papers, um, especially also for our younger generation, young at ISTA, uh, interesting thing, and uh, on proficiency tests, which will be run at the end of the year. We talked about the remote training process, which we uh, started with the QA workshops, and uh, some TCOMs are working now also on this topic to um, use remote trainings for uh, their workshops or other ways of communicating. Um, remote audits, Florina talked about this, but this is only a way back for us for person audits, in-person audits. And last but not least, I have to thank the whole secretariat that not only within the COVID-19 situation, but also within this very interesting time for us of having a remote um, ordinary general meeting with all the other side meetings that we were able to move our office to a new location, to a better location, uh, which is done uh, last Friday. And the new address, and you will be informed about it, um, and newsletters and others pretty soon, is Richti Arcade in Balizen. It was uh, time for us to move out of the old office after 20 years, uh, because we couldn't see any increase and improvement of um, IT solutions there and the IT solutions are very eminent for us to um, stay in, in business in the moment and keep cost at a lower level. We also did last year, even during the pandemic, the signature of a memorandum of understanding with the Asia Pacific Seed Association. We want that to be um, a stronger collaboration between both organizations and a partnership to, to go forward and to work on seed testing in the uh, Asian area, more in Asia than in Pacific. Uh, ISTA will have this way a more increased footprint in Asia, and that could be strengthening uniformity in seed testing in Asia. We have, um, by the way, a meeting uh, together with USAID, uh, APSA, and um, is that participating with other organizations on the Lower Mekong Initiative to bring seed testing uh, into this area. Of course, we want to go for the um, strategic uh, goal of um, zero hunger. And if you have, are interested in looking at the signature, please go to the YouTube channel of ISTA and you will find the signature ceremony for this memorandum.
this could also be um, uh, a first start to work closer with African countries and South and Central America. Coming to the finances, we had um, a lot of work this year, um, especially to look into the possibility um, of a budget which is affected by COVID situation and a budget for 2021, which we looked at, which we are not showing you here, but which we looked at if we would have not had a um, situation like we have now. Um, and what we can say is that we have little effects. We are now have no income on annual meeting, but also no expenditure on annual meeting in that case. Um, we have in 2020 a lower income on accreditation audits because we did less but a higher income on accreditation audits in 2021 because uh, Florina told you that we are doing more audits in, in this year. The expenditure and I only want to look at the, the highlights here are of course we have higher expenditure also in the accreditation audits um, we look at provisions for fluctuation, uh, so we take money out of the reserves, which is mainly for the um, electronic certificates for the new website for the 100,000 uh, K projects, which are now in the third year and all are coming, three years are coming together now, uh, where we have to do payments um, and we have to take some money out of the reserves just for um, paying these one-off projects. Uh, you see in here that uh, for next year, we propose a higher expenditure for uh, Secretary General costs not covered. Otherwise, this is just to draw your attention to the point that here 25,000 Swiss francs are included for the ISTA, for the Young at ISTA project just uh, mentioned by Kesha Voodoo. We have no other point where we can show it in the moment, but we will do so in the next year's budget. Okay, next slide. And just to mention that uh, the projects we are financing as one-off projects are 914,000, so 50,000 out of uh, uh, the normal budget, our, our cash flow is used to finance these projects, which is also a reason why we probably do not need any increase of membership fees in 2020. Uh, you also see that we calculated the 2022 budget with a, um, the same membership fees we have in the moment. And Kesha Wood will um, bring forward a short message in a minute to uh, give you the idea of um, what we are thinking about uh, not to raise the fees. What we are looking into is, um, of course, our figures are audited by our auditors at BDO and uh, they were approved. And maybe we can also say what helps us saving um, quite some money in the moment is also that our, our um, uh, finances are electronically. We have a complete electronic bookkeeping since April last year, and that helped us also to go through the uh, through the pandemic. That was, of course, due to the fact that uh, we put everything on, on the internet and we have everything in, in a personal cloud for us, which is hosted in Bern. And uh, this project was uh, run by Sejal Patel and very a lot of thanks from my side to her that this could be possible. Um, and uh, uh, the ECOM recommends you to stay with BDO as financial auditors also for 2021. I thank you very much and uh, wish you all to stay healthy. And um, I hand over now to, I cannot hand over it directly. I hand over now to Kesha Voodoo for the membership fee proposal 2022. Thanks, Andreas. So, hello, and then I'll continue to. Uh, speak on the ISTA membership fee. 
the proposed annual membership fee will become effective from 2022 of course the designated authorities are the key components for the ista organization no membership fee is associated with them however they are all the designated authorities they are nominating designated members to vote thanks all of the um, all the designated authorities and also coordinating the member labs in the country and also getting the feedback through the designated members to the ista so here uh, so when we when we look at the current membership the categories and annual fee the member laboratory category are the sampling entity the currently is the 5214 swiss franc and in addition if you are an accredited member is an extra fee of 1224 swiss franc and the similarly the another category like the personal member annual fee the fee currently is the 1049 swiss franc the personal member who is a person engaged in practice of seed testing or seed science and and also who supports the activities of ista so this category entitled to like free online then single user access to the international rules for seed testing etc then coming to the uh, associate member the associate member fee is the 214 swiss franc then when we when we look the value of this uh, membership fee i think uh, in the couple of years ago uh, the ista survey so what is the uh, what 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 is the the value the uh, in the past the membership all the members express that most of them uh, agreed with the value of the ista international standardized certificates ista handbooks and provision of proficiency test programs so determination of the ista membership fee is based on the cost involved in the operation of the association so just now the uh, just before the secretary general of ista andreas talked about uh the 2022 budget estimates the current year the current year our cash flow uh, says that it is higher than the running cost and this is also uh, this also we can cover the about the 60000 swiss franc for one of the uh, projects and also the cost on the electronic certificates and then which are financed from the Uh, reserves as mentioned by the andreas in the 2022 budget it is calculated with the same income from constant uh, membership and audit fee so here have a level of uh, level on income and expenditure so therefore we will not need an increase in the membership fee especially when we look at the at this moment the membership development so as mentioned by andreas and also the florina mentioned that so every year the ista membership uh, has been increasing across the uh, globe so on the other hand so we are also keeping the expenditure under control and perform all measures to reduce the cuts so therefore uh, the executive committee 
executive committee is proposed that membership fee remain unchanged no increase is proposed for 2022 so if the membership fee are paid on or before 31st december 2021 a discount of 10% rounded up to the nearest whole swiss franc amount will be applied to the fee thank you very much thanks andreas thank you kasha wunder for your presentation and um, yeah, we're doing all the best as you said to keep also the cost at a low and to go virtual with a lot of things um, uh, like our own data in our own virtual server is very helpful in this respect uh, well, we hand over now to ernest allen for his um, section on the rules proposal thank you very much ernest um, Please take over uh, the presentation. Thank you, Andreas. All right. Um, to start, I want to thank uh, the technical committee chairs, TCOM members, the ISA secretariat, and all other stakeholders that work with us to facilitate our work in publishing the ISTA rules. Uh, this year, the Rules Committee is submitting to the membership 10 editorial changes and 16 rule change proposals. As we did uh, with last year's virtual meeting, we requested that you, the membership and stakeholders, submit your comments prior to the open rules meeting so that we could discuss them uh, during the presentation, which we did. Uh, and while several issues were resolved during the presentations, a few of the comments required additional time for the chairs to discuss the comments with their committees. Uh, the chairs have since submitted to me and the Secretariat their final proposals. These changes are in the document that we will review today and as of June 1st the updated documents are also current on the ISTA website. Um, I will point out any changes that have been made uh, after Tuesday's meeting uh, so that the voting delegates and their constituents can make informed decisions during voting. Uh, while reviewing this document, please remember that green text means that this text was added after the original document was published two months ago. Red text indicates that the comment has been deleted or moved, and blue text means that the information is new. If there's been no change to the original proposal, I'll show the proposal, but I'll slowly move through it and go right to the next proposal. Uh, proposals that are approved by vote uh, will be incorporated into the International Rules for Seat Testing 2022 edition. This edition will be effective and published on the ISTA website on January 1st, 2022. And with that, I'll get started right with the rules. Starting with editorial corrections, the first editorial correction. Uh, this proposal removes obsolete website information from 1.5.2.2. The same editorial correction will occur in section uh, 3.7. This editorial correction was submitted by the Purity uh, TCOM. There were no changes in this editorial correction, so I'll move to the next one. The next editorial correction, the accreditation working group propo proposed an improvement to the text from chapter three related to the proposal C.2.3, storage of seed samples. This uh, editorial correction was submitted by the ISTA accreditation department. There were no changes to this editorial correction, so I'll let you see the changes there on the left and move to the next correction.
The next correction, uh, an incorrect reference is used in rule uh, in rule proposal two po um, rule section 2.5.2.1, minimum size of the working sample that needs to be corrected. That correction has been made in this proposal. The next editorial correction, corrections to the protocol for the approval of automatic seed samplers required due to the 2019 update of the ISTA list of stabilized plant names. Uh, in this editorial correction, the author names uh, was included in the original proposal. It was removed to harmonize it with other sections uh, within the ISTA rules. In this section of the same document, there was an incorrect table uh, reference, which has been corrected also at the bottom. Uh, the table changed from 2A to table 2C. Additions required due to the 2019 update of the ISTA list of stabilized plant names. Rules changes for Table 3B Part 1 and 2 and Table 5A Part 1. I will scroll through so you can see those changes. Primarily, uh, the change occurred just to the genus and the family. For this first part there were no changes this um, editorial change was uh, this editorial change in green below that's coming up um, was discovered after the publication of the rules document. Uh, it has um, not changed since the open rules meeting, so it's just the same as we uh, saw a few uh, a week ago. And this change was required in Table 5A Part 1, uh, again, uh, due to the changes in the, um, it's the list of stabilized plant names. Uh, for this editorial change, uh, the wording in the gray box was slightly modified for clarity. Uh, the germination committee received a request to consider the symbols used to denote division for 5.6.1 of the ISTA rules. The request was to change the colon uh, symbol to a forward slash. Uh, this change is supported by the germination committee. And you can see those changes in the text below. The temperature for DNA extraction indicated in the validation report uh, was reported wrongly in the method. So that correction has been made, changing it from 65 degrees C to 100 degrees C.
This correction is in response to a comment submitted prior to the Open Rules Committee meeting. Uh, there has not been any changes uh, since that meeting. Um, the proposal was approved for the uh, 20, this proposal was approved for the 2020 edition. However, the change was placed in the wrong place within 18.8.1. Uh, this editorial change corrects that error. It involves a clarification of how the uh, how to report purity content in seed mixtures. What happened was a paragraph was placed in the the paragraph was supposed to be placed in the second paragraph origin, originally. Uh, however, it was placed in the fourth paragraph where it uh, didn't flow well. Uh, in this section. This editorial correction is in response to a comment during the Open Rules Committee meeting. Uh, the Purity Committee co consulted with the Seat Health Committee and provided rewording to more accurately describe the relationship between sclerotia and, and ergot. Um, this uh, editorial clarification was submitted uh, by the Purity Committee, again in co consultation with the Seat Health Committee and approved by a majority vote within uh, the Purity Committee. And this was the last editorial change. Uh, just a reminder that the editorial corrections are voted on as a single block. So by accepting these changes, you are agreeing to all the changes. Part B, new species and changes to species names, B.1.1, addition of new species to table 2C. An ISTA method validation study conducted on Kenopodium quinoa provided evidence showing the best germination method for repeat, repeatability and reproducibility is 20C, TP, or BP, and first count after four days and final count after seven days. In this change, the Purity Committee was consulted, the Germination Committee, and the Bulking and Sampling Committee was um, was consulted to make sure that everything was needed for uh, the addition of this new species. There was no change uh, to this proposal uh, since its original publication. B.1.2 changes to the ISTA stabilized list. There were none this year. Uh, the next revision to the ISTA stabilized list will be considered at the 2025 ISTA meeting. Part C, rule changes and new methods requiring a vote. Uh, chapter one, ISTA certificates. C.1.1. Uh, clarifying primary nomenclature reporting source in ISTA. The proposal is to add the IST, uh, add, uh, is to add the ISTA stabilized list pl of plant names as a primary source for reporting other seeds. Uh, the following proposal has been developed developed by the Purity Committee and approved by a majority vote of the committee. Uh, it's important to note that if approved, uh, this change will also apply to the reporting results section in Chapter 4, uh, 4.7. There were no changes to this proposal.
chapter two sampling c.2.1 revision of 2.2.12 treated seed and 2.2.13 coded seed these changes are requested to clarify the additives that are used to either treat or to coat seed may contain more than one of the enlisted ingredients in the current wording it could be construed that only one additive could be used uh, to either treat seed or coated seed. The proposal was uh, unanimously approved by the bulking and sampling committee. There were no changes to this proposal. C.2.2, revision of 2.5.2.2.1, mechanical divider method. These changes are requested to enable a more accurate description of the various types of dividers that may be used for sample reduction. The proposals uh, was unanimously uh, approved by the bulking and sampling committee uh, through voting. Uh, there were there were two edits to this proposal uh, since the open rules meeting, and as I stroll through it, I'll highlight those. So in green on your right, there was just a rewording. Uh, editorial uh, correction. And in section D under rotary divider, there was another, uh, uh, there was de de a, a deletion um, of the higher the speed it would be left as just the longer the duration of the dividing operation, the better the accuracy. C.2.3, revision of 2.5.3, storage of samples. This change is requested uh, to refer to chapters three and four respectively for clarification on the way in which different fractions of working samples should be stored after testing. This proposal was drawn up in consultation with the purity committee and unanimously approved by the bulking and sampling committee. There were no additional changes to this proposal. C.2.4, revision of 2.8. Table 2C, Parts 1 and 3. When Salvia Hispanica was added to the ISTA rules in 2020, it was listed under Table 2C, Part 3. The Bulking and Sampling Committee has since received requests from the ISTA, from ISTA accredited laboratories to remove it to Table 2C, Part 3, uh, from Table 2C, Part 3, to Table 2C, Part 1, as it is used as a food and in large quantities of the commodity as well as uh, seed lots that are produced. Therefore, it should be regarded as an agricultural crop. 
Uh, sample weights were modified to ensure consistency with other agricultural species within part one. Uh, this proposal was drawn up in consultation with the Purity Committee and unanimously approved by the Bulking and Sampling Committee. Uh, if this proposal is, a, uh, is approved, a consequential change will occur uh, for the same species in Chapter 5. And this consequential change was uh, discovered after uh, the original proposal was uh, proposed, what was submitted. So we added it uh, prior to the open rules meeting. Since the open rules meeting, uh, we have not this, this changed. Uh, this proposal has not changed. Chapter three, the purity analysis. Uh, this, uh, the purity committee has decided to withdraw this proposal to allow for more time for discussion within the committee. Uh, they may bring this uh, proposal back uh, at another time. C 3.2, revised pure seed definition for O sativas. Uh, this proposal assigns a PSD uh, to O sativas, which, um, which is already in the ISTA rules. Uh, the following proposal has been develop, developed by the Purity Committee to correct this omission and approved by majority vote of the committee. There were no changes to this proposal. Chapter five, the germination test. C.5.1, an alternate germination method for Eustoma exaltum. A 2019 study has successfully shown that at 20 degrees Celsius, uh, that the 20 degrees Celsius method produces results comparable to those produced uh, with the standard method. Statistical analysis shows the average percentage of normal seedlings reputability and reproducibility are acceptable. This proposal is supported by the FSC, the Germination Committee, and by a uh, validation study. There was no change uh, from the original proposal. C.5.2, uh, germination method for glycine max, addition of growing media. An ISTA method validation study was conducted to determine the suitability of utilizing crepe cellulose paper as a primary media for the top of paper method for glycine max and to allow this media to be added to the ISTA rules table 5A part one. This proposal is supported by the germination committee and also a method validation study.
there were no changes uh, to this proposal uh, since the open rules meeting. However, if this change, if this proposal is accepted, crepe cellulose paper will be added uh, to the germination methods. Again, this was um, done prior to the open rules meeting, so everyone should have seen it then. Germination method for Pinus sylvestris, a C.5.3 uh, edition of growing media. An ISTA method validation study was conducted to determine the suitability of utilizing agar as a primary method for Pinus sylvestris and adding this media to the ISTA rules table 5A part two. Results have shown good repeat repeatability and reproducibility. So the germ so the germ, so the germ um, committee proposed uh, to uh, add agar to the ISTA rules for uh, Pinus sylvestris. This proposal is supported by the germination committee, the forest tree and shrub committee, and a method validation study. There have been no changes to this proposal since um, publication. Actually, I'm sorry. There was uh, there was a change uh, in uh, the title of the consequential changes. It was an error. Uh, instead of C.5.2, uh, the the right reference should have been C.5.3. Uh, that change was made prior to the open rules meeting. Again, um, during the open rules meeting, uh, there was a discussion on the units that should be included in this proposal, as well as, well as um, um, advice for the thickness of the media. Uh, so those two things were added. C.5.4, revision of wording regarding germination using top of paper. Uh, the germination committee proposes to remove the word upright regarding, top of, re regarding the top of paper method. This wording suggests that if seeds were planted in an upright position, they may fall off the TP. This wording is more appropriate for between paper method. This proposal is supported by the germination committee. There were no changes to this proposal. C. 
changes in abnormal seatling evaluation. The germination committee proposes to add seatling abnormality criterion uh, 32-07 to allium species regarding primary infection. This proposal is supported by the germination committee. There were no changes to this proposal. Chapter seven, seat health testing, C.7.1, revision of validated seat health methods, 7-013A and 7-013B. This proposed change will allow the, use, the optional use of methyl, methyl blue stained to aid visualization, visualization of the fungi, fungal hyphae in methods 7-013A and 7-013B. B. This option is based on a method validation study coupled to a PT. This proposal was approved and supported by the Seed Health Committee. There were no changes to this proposal. C.7.2, harmonization of pretreatments pre for methods 7-006, and 7-022. This proposal harmonizes pretreatments and updates the description for several similar methods within Chapter 7. The harmonized pretreatments are supported by validation studies carried out by the Seat Health Committee. This pr proposal was approved by majority vote of the Seat Health Committee. There were no changes to this proposal. Chapter nine, determination of moisture content, C.9.1, guidance for species not listed in table 9A, but is included in table 2C. There have been questions on how to report moisture results for species listed in table 2C, but not listed in table 9A. 
the proposed cross-reference in reporting section of in the reporting section of chapter nine gives clear advice. The following proposal has been developed and approved by majority vote of the moisture committee. There were no changes uh, to this proposal. And that concludes the uh, proposals for this year. Uh, Andreas will explain uh, the voting process uh, since this will be done uh, remotely. Thank you very much, Ernest. And um, uh, it was good to guide us through this document. Um, I will explain that uh, voting process a little later. I would now like to uh, invite Keshavulu for the next presentation, maybe mentioning also to you that um, this presentation of Ernest was a little bit longer than we expected. Um, and we will probably overrun the time by a good 20 minutes. Thank you for your understanding, Keshavulu. The floor is yours on an article change proposal for 2022. Thanks, Andreas. I would like to present on the article change proposal. The executive committee of ISTA has made article change proposal 2021 unanimously supports it and would like to request the membership to vote in acceptance of it at this meeting. Article change proposal OGM 21-11 to amend the process for filling vacancies on the ISTA Executive Committee. The background of this, the Article 13C of the ISTA Article enables the outgoing president to accept the position of immediate past president. In the event of the outgoing president being unable to serve, there will be a vacancy in the executive committee. However, the current article does not account for the outgoing president being unable to serve as immediate past president, and which creates a vacancy in the ECOM. This article chain will enable a ninth member at a large to join the executive committee. As per the article 16 of his nomination and election in the event of the outgoing president being unable to serve to the ISTA due to various reasons. So therefore, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, therefore, the article change proposal OGM 21-11, the current proposal is, the current article 15 is the executive committee shall consist of the president, vice president, and immediate last president together with eight members at large who shall be designated members. In the proposed change, in the event of the immediate past president being unable to serve, there shall be nine members at large, all of whom shall be designated members. Thank you. Andreas, 
Thank you very much, Kashabulu. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. And um, I will come back to that um, article change and the next one um, during when we talk about the voting process. Steve, uh, that is a motion from the executive committee and it's up to you to present. Thank you, Andreas. So, preparatory document uh, OGM 2108 um, talks about uh, the motion that I'm going to mention. And the just as a background, the executive committee consists of the president, vice president, immediate past president, together with <clears throat> eight members at large who must be designated members at the time of election to the ECOM, as per Article 16. Or if the Article change that Kashavula has just been presented to you. In the future, it could be the president, vice president, and nine members at large. The executive committee is the elected by the membership to represent them and to try to provide the support to the membership and to the technical committees and put into place the strategic plan. Um, the countries or distinct economies support those people on the ECOM um, by both time and financial support. ECOM members are not paid for by ISTA at all, they're paid for by their host organizations. The current ECOM is asking the membership to approve that the future ECOM members would not pay the personal ISTA membership fee once elected to the ECOM. And the reason for doing this is, is to make it easier for laboratories with ECOM members serving to transfer the free laboratory personal membership that they often make use of to have other staff listed as that person and allow them to be involved. So that's the background to why the ECOM is putting this forward to you. And the document online gives you the details for you to study before you make your decision. Ecom elections will also be held in 2022 at the ordinary general meeting. And one thing I wanted to take this opportunity is to say to you and to work with your designated authorities who designate the members and the members of those that can vote. And it's the designated members who can serve on the Ecom. That there will be a vacancy for the vice president in 2022. That vice president automatically serves as vice president for 22 to 25, and then automatically becomes ISTA president from 25 to 28. We know also that there will be several vacancies on the ECOM in 2022 to work with Kashavulu during his presidency, due to people retiring from the ECOM or moving work. We want to have representation from all regions of the world, and we'd like, and it's possible to have more than one person from one region. But I really would like you to encourage uh, to have discussions with your designated authorities, with your colleagues, and you as designated members think about serving on the ECOM to, to help the membership and help our association go forward under the presidency of Kashavulu. Thank you. Now I'd like to hand over to Craig McGill um, to give us some information about the 33rd Easter Congress, which we plan to hold in Christchurch, New Zealand from the 4th to the 10th of May. Um, so Craig, over to you. Thank you. Very good. Th thank you, Steve. Um, so as you, as you will be aware, the 33rd Easter Congress will be held in Christchurch, New Zealand from the 4th of May uh, to the 10th of May 2022. Planning for the Congress is continuing um, via the National Organising Committee, which consists of members from the New Zealand ISTA accredited ISTA laboratories, um, the New Zealand seed industry and research organisations within New Zealand, all working closely with the um, Seed Symposium convener, the ISTA Secretariat and the ISTA Executive Committee. More information on the 
Congress will be ca will be distributed in the coming 11 months. But today I'd just like to focus on an important aspect of the Congress, which is the SEED Symposium, which is for which there are some key dates coming up in the next few months. Um, so the SEED Symposium will have the symposium theme, quality for seed for sustainable agriculture. And in preparing all the work that's gone on to preparing the symposium to date, we must thank the symposium convener, Manuel Nagel, working again with the National Organising Committee, the um, events working group under the chairmanship of Berta Killerman, and um, in the, the secretariat in particular, Olga and Andreas. Um, so information on the SEED Symposium was distributed in an ISTA newsletter of the 28th of April 2021. Um, but just to remind you, within the symposium themes, there are ses session topics on seed microbial interactions, new technologies, heirloom and wild species for sustainability, biosecurity challenges, molecular understanding of seed dormancy and deterioration, and biomolecular techniques for species and varietal assessment. As I mentioned, there are some key dates coming up for the SEED Symposium. There is more details on both the um, session topics and these, and, and these key dates and what you need to do in terms of these key dates on the ISTA website. But just to remind you that abstracts are now open for the symposium and can be submitted online with the deadline for those abs for submission of those abstracts or submission of papers being the 1st of October 2021. In December 2021, authors will be informed of whether papers have been accepted for oral or poster presentation, and then there are some deadlines for payments of registration fees, etc., to ensure that um, all authors making presentations are um, oral presentations are uh, and then subsequently posted presentations are, are registered and will are expected to attend the, the Congress. Um, now I will play you a, a video which will give you more information on what you can expect from the Congress and from what you can expect from when you visit New Zealand. So. Thank you very much, Craig, on this information. And um, let me just mention one point here that um, 
We can hold this meeting now virtual and have a voting by correspondence, which I guide you through in a, in a few minutes. But um, for next year, that is not covered by the Swiss um, regulation concerning COVID-19. It may be, um, but it may be not. So we are looking forward and working forward and um, going forward to have uh, our Congress 2022 in a personal form uh, in Christchurch. I now welcome Alexander Malko. We know each other quite well from a lot of other meetings. And uh, I invite Alexander to introduce uh, the meeting of 2023 uh, to be held in St. Petersburg in the Russian Federation. The floor is yours, Alexander. Mm, looks like uh, good day for everyone. Uh, some problems with voice. Uh, I am Alexander Malko. I am head of Russian Agriculture Center. First of all, allow to thank you for the possibility of participation and performance on this important action. It is carried out is important for the further development and coordination of seed growing of the different countries. Russia is a state in Eastern Europe and North Asia. The capital of country is Moscow. It is on the first place on the world on its territory, and it takes nice place in the world by number of citizens. Russia has 11 time zones from east to west. There are 85 regions in Russia. 10% of all arable land in the world are in Russian Federation. But all territory of Russia belongs to the zone of risky agriculture. Russia is the coldest country in the world. 65% of its territory are covered by permanent frost. The lowest average annual temperature of year from all countries of the world in Russia, too. All these facts are also about Russia. The North Pole of cold. Russia, as well, is the country with the maximum differential of annual temperature in the world. That is 166. Russia is a multinational state with wide ethnic and cultural diversity. Near 200 nationalities live on the territory of country. The agriculture is one of the largest sectors of national economy of Russia. Its share in domestic national products is more than one-sixth. This branch is the basis for development of many industries and services to the population. Now, Russia became one of the world leaders in grain export. The number of consumers in Europe, Asia, Africa, and South Africa, America achieved the figure of 84. Some date on the uh, rural economy of Russia you can see on the picture number five. For example, as the vital products are concerned, we produce enough about 5 million tons of rye, the first place in the world, about 18 million uh, old tons of barley, the first place, about 43 million tons of sugar beet, in the first place in the world to produce sugar. Breeding and seed growing are still important segment of Russia agriculture. Seed market in Russia develops rapidly and intensively. For the uh, last years, the market of seed agriculture plants in Russia grows and quite capacious. The approximate capacity of the seed market in Russia 3.2-3.5 dollars billion, billions, including the seed grown in the uh, farms for self-sufficient. Annually for crops is required seeds approximately. Spring cereals, 5.5 million tons. Winter cereals, 4 million tons. Corn, 80,000 tons. Sunflower, 
40,000 tons potato, 5 million tons vegetable, 15,000 tons. The seeds control in Russia has more than 100 years old history. On December 1877, Professor Alexander Batalin opened the first seed testing station in St. Petersburg. As example of creation of that, he was a station and professor Friedrich Nobe in Germany, the organization of work of which Alexander Batalin learned during his missions in Germany. History of development of the seed control in Russia for a long time closely connected with Europe. Russia has also long history with cooperation with ISTA. The study of world experience led to understanding that uh, uh, the fact that legislation should be in the formation of uh, national seed growing. Now, the policy in plant breeding, seed growing and seed control is based on the civil code and the federal seed law. In short, we can expect the uh, general approach to uh, certification by following scheme. The seeds in turn to, uh, for trade to, to Nova will be certified. The seeds varieties which are included in the national list of varieties in Russia will be certified. The varieties which are included in the national list of varieties for cultivation and use in Russia must be tested on DUS. The patented variety uh, will be certified with the uh, consent of consort of the owners. Patented varieties give the holder of the right to receive royalty. Certification is carried out on the minimum requirements of national standards for seed quality and variety purity. Process of certification of seeds consists in definition of the sowing qualities and variety purities qualities. Uh, and issue the documents recognized on all territory of the country. Soil qualities are based on following indicators, physical purity, germination, moisture content, number of wheat, wheat and other crop seeds, seed health. These indexes are the same as in other countries. They should correspond to the minimum norms of national standards. Volume of certification of seeds in Russia annually increase. Important influence on that process are affected by the state investments in production of seeds in Russia that considerably increased for the last years. The structure of the plant breeding and seed production is followed. Ministry of Agriculture of Russian Federation, research centers for breeding and seed production, patent holders of varieties in national list, agriculture producers. The total number of varieties of agriculture plants included uh, in the, our national list is more than 25,000, of which Russian 17,000 varieties, foreign 8,000 varieties. We are happy to invite the Easter annual meeting 2023 to Russia, to St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg is the capital, a cultural, scientific and industrial center of Russia. St. Petersburg is a city of palaces and green parks, rivers and channels. It is real gates of Russia. Many commercial ways from the west to east are encrossed here. St. Petersburg is the most northern city in the world with population of more than one million people. St. Petersburg is the second biggest city in Russia. Among of the cities normally situated in Europe, it is the third in population but Moscow and London. Historical center of the city is connected with the historical complexes in the World Heritage List of UNESCO. The main water artery uh, of the city is Neva River. St. Petersburg is the largest center of agriculture science of Russia. For example, in St. Petersburg, there is a world collection of plant seeds. Plant seeds. It began to gather about, 10, uh, about 100 years ago by famous Russian scientist Nikolai Vavilov and his colleagues. They organized 110 expeditions to many countries of the world. The collection remains 
uh, one of the largest in the world today. Currently, the historical collection is kept at all Russian Institute of Plant Genetic Resources, named after Vavilov. You may be able to visit here during annual meeting 2023. St. Petersburg is a cultural center of world importance. It is often called the capital, cultural capital of Russia. There are near 8.5 thousand objects and cultural heritage. Dear colleagues, welcome to Russia. Welcome to St. Petersburg. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Alexander, for your kind invitation, which the ECOM uh, accepted. And we are all looking forward to come. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, we're looking forward to meeting all of you in St. Petersburg and probably before because um, we have to organize this annual meeting as well. Let us come now to the voting process. Um, you received some voting sheets which will be replaced uh, during today um, because we have to add two parts to this voting sheet. Uh, you will find then on your voting sheets the following things to be voted on, which will be the report of the Secretary General, the financial report to be approved, the approval of the budget 2021 and the provisional budget of 2022. You approve the BD, you can approve the BDO as is the external financial auditors for the financial year 2021. Um, you could approve the fixation of the annual subscription fee for 2022, which is uh, the same uh, as for the last years. Uh, you should approve the reports of the technical committees. Uh, you can approve, and that um, would be then the number seven on the, on the list, the article change proposal, which we have to add, and also the motion point eight, which you were presented today. On the rules changes, uh, we made some change to the um, previous document. Uh, if you approve all rule changes, you can only have to click one box. And if you want to abstain uh, from voting here, you can also click one box. If you click the no box, you have to go through all um, changes separately and either vote with a yes, with a no, or with an abstain. Um, Olga will send out the revised forms and they have to be returned before June 11, 2021, end of business Switzerland, which is 1900 CET time. Thank you very much. Um, I hand over now to um, our colleague in Egypt. I've got Rehan for uh, his closing remarks. I've got um, Please join us on the floor. You're still muted, Amgat. Could you unmute yourself?
Well, I'm going to please use your your microphone button, which is on the control panel. All right, so we tried that. Maybe I could hand over to, to Steve to um, go ahead with his remarks. Thank you, Andreas. So uh, I hope uh, Amgad can join us to to uh, off, offer his closing remarks. Um, it's been a very full program today, and I hope people have, have enjoyed the program. It's the other bottom on the top going with the arrow down. Yeah. So if you could advance that for me, Andreas, if you wouldn't mind. So just in for my closing remarks, uh, I wanted to go back over the, the fact that we've had to have virtual meetings for webinars, YouTube discussions, and QA workshops. Um, I thank all those attending, preparing, and those presenting the topics at this meeting today and the other meetings we've had in the past year. To the uh, uh, There's a bad noise in in, in um, got um, uh, microphone probably. So Go ahead, Steve. I also like to thank the country's distinct economies and laboratories and organisations who support ISTA in achieving its goals. In particular, the TCOMs who presented their work um, to the membership and at least 150 people or more attended both days on the 1st and the 2nd of June. So that was a re really good way of presenting their work. And they're also going to be holding other open meetings and, and also uh, presenting their findings within C Testing International October edition. I'd like to thank also the Secretariat um, and hope they enjoy their new location, work location um, at Valicellin. Next slide. Again, like I said before, um, you can't say thank you enough to the hard work and the people that people do and work for us. Next slide. Is the, the This slide is the people and of the e-com and if we were in the ordinary uh, physical meeting, we would off, offer a round of applause for them. But um, I, I, I know that we're, we, we're doing that here um, with, with you um, online. And also the next slide is about the Secretariat and the, the thanks that I want to give to the Secretariat. Um, I also want to make sure that people know that um, we have the OGM documents to vote on, um, where you need to submit your voting documents to the ISTA Secretariat by the 11th of June, 2021, and um, need to be there ready um, to be recorded. I wanted to also make a mention of the ISTA Congress again, that we hope to will go ahead and be physical meeting in 2022. Um, that's based at the new convention center in Christchurch, which is uh, they, they've, they've almost finished building, ready for the meeting in 2022. And we see that on the next slide where we, we have a, a representation and you also saw that venue on the video from, from Craig. Um, many of the associations and people that we work with um, we're now making those links both virtually and we hope to make them physically. One of the events that's coming up is on the 15th of June, a collaborative meeting between IFSS, um, Science Based Organization, and ISTA. So if you look on the events list of uh, ISTA website, you'll be able to see that and register for that, and I hope you'll be able to attend that. 
attendance today has again been very good. And I'd like to thank you all for attending and, and offer you a virtual hug from me to all of you um, around the world to take care of yourselves, families, friends, and colleagues, and hope you can stay safe uh, and we see each other at a future meeting. I think um, Agnor has been able to join us now. Um, and uh, ho hopefully he can offer a few closing comments as well. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you very much. I'm glad you changed places with Marva. Maybe her um, microphone is better. Please uh, go ahead with your closing remarks from Egypt. Good evening. I'm sorry, but the microphone is uh, maybe better on. But now I will speak with Alex. Thank you very much. All right, you are now a little bit frozen, but I think that was um, the closing remark. And um, we hope to come to Egypt at, um, at a certain stage. Could we have all panelists now joining up um, again on the screen, please, that we um, can give a goodbye to everybody. And uh, Steve, um, you may then be able to close the meeting. Thank you very much, Andreas. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sorry we had the technical difficulty with the sound there from from um, Am Amgard in, in Egypt. But uh, I know that he was uh, saying about the involvement of Egypt and and Ister. And we much appreciate their participation. So thank you every very much for everybody here today. And I officially bring the uh, meeting to a close for ISTA in 2021. And um, now I'm I'm less than 12 months as ISTA president. So Kashabulu, you need to be getting ready to take over and and work with everybody ready for 2022. And we hope we can have a physical meeting between now and then. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, good day, good night, good evening to everybody around the world. Thanks very much. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.